Welcome to part 22 of my building the Black Pearl all scenario version. And I know I've been a little slow lately trying to get things produced. I've just been real busy on a lot of different fronts. Unfortunately, it's not been on the Black Pearl, but I have made a little bit of progress. And so I'll show that to you. A lot of it is going to be on these dead eyes and the supports that go with them. So it'll be a short, uh, short segment, hopefully informative and uh, a couple of the, the minor issues that I come across and how I try and conquer them. So let me show you what I've been doing. One thing that's nice about having the blueprints being full scale, I can use the diagrams to get measurements. And so as an example, I always call this a, a bow spread. I'm sure it's a bow spread. I don't really know. You know me, I'm a rookie at this. I happen to have some oak dowel that are the same diameter of what's used for this particular piece. So I'm going to use the oak instead of just the, uh, the wood that comes with it, which is probably a pine. I don't really know. So anyway, it gives me the proper length, so I'll cut that off. And it also gives the taper. So I will measure that and then get uh, that to the proper diameter. I was a little confused in this area on the, the uh, boom that goes in the front of the ship in that after you, I put these angle pieces in place it says to drill some slots. That was difficult to do but then when I went to do it I didn't see the purpose. I, you know there's some rope that goes around holds the boom in place. I've kind of put the rope on here. I probably should have wrapped it around the boom. I didn't, but I'll live with that. And then you can see this hole that the rope goes through so you can keep wrapping it was already in this part of the ship. And then the angular piece, so the area that I drilled holes through to make that slot is right in here. So all I did is the final rope I pulled through there and then used it as a tie-off point. So I don't really think I did that right, but it's going to be acceptable to me and if I want to give this the appearance of being looped around I can loop a couple more ropes around it I guess a little oval piece of wood that goes back and kind of seals that right there I did not glue this in place at all it just uh, is there on its own I did taper it next I'm going to start working on this segment this is what secures the dead eyes in place you can see there's some intricate work to be done on this. They'll all be placed along here. You might notice that this wood is lighter in color. That's because it does not have any of the tongue oil on it yet. It'll darken when I do that. I may put a little more stain on it. but uh, They'll go through there and all along here. I just have this little piece attached there so I didn't lose it. It will go on the front of this after all those dead eyes are in place. It's been my experience that uh, dead eyes do not absorb stain very well, so I should have done this earlier. So I'm going to soak these in stain for quite a while. I have two different sizes, so I'm going to do two different batches. I'm going to let that sit for probably at least half hour. We'll come back and see how they're doing. For those of you that are interested, here's the, uh, the dead eyes that I'm beginning to work on. And this is uh, called a chain plate. And this is a backing link. And there's different ways that it can be done. So the one that I have is a solid piece here. So... Um, I'm not that up to date on terms, so I thought I would open up my book on ship modeling simplified and get that name for you. And I pre-made them so they'll be easier to attach and this wire that they have me use is is very flexible, very bendable. You'll need to take something needle nose pliers. I've got some little pliers that actually make loops in wire and you'll need to open it just ever so slightly so that you can get this chain plate part on that and then simply just close it back up. So I have all those made and ready to go. 
We'll check and see how my dead eyes have absorbed that stain. It's been probably at least 30 minutes. Well, these absorb better than what I thought they would. Those are nice and dark. So those are ready to go. Let me get them cleaned up and we'll move on. I made four of these chain plates. What you're trying to attain is this distance here to be consistent. This first one I made is too short. And this has got to fit through. See this uh, wooden brace here. It's got to fit through. Now they show that with the, the uh, twist and the wire in there. I that's too tight because there's a wooden piece that'll go on top of this and it's going to interfere and you're going to have to do some sanding or something. What I did is allowed space so that this can fit through the wooden part without that hassle. So it's a small thing and that's just the way that I'm doing it. When looking at the picture in the book, this would be like this and where your uh, opening is to get that piece through there. That goes to the back then just manually by hand, then manually by hand I take the dead eye and you can see this actually starts out on the right hand side, loops around and comes in front and then twists. So I'm going around the right hand side and there's the little gap I'm talking about. I can adjust that a little bit as I go and this metal soft enough that it bends around. Let's be careful, I'm making it a little bit too short again. And this is going to go around and in front. I want to make it a little bit longer, so what I'm doing is I'm pulling this back out. There you go. I'm going to go in front. I'm going to pull it as tight as I can get it. You can also take some pliers of some sort, needle nose, and just gently kind of cinch that down, tighten it a little bit more. And now I'm going to bend this around. And you're just going around behind it. And then you're going to snip that excess off. down so it won't come off and I play with getting it a little snugger on there okay once you get it to that point you're gonna need to do some straightening again just kind of tweaking the roundness of that metal wire. Now I need to get it in the right position. So the loop, these go on opposite loops. So this loop is this way. This loop will need to go just the opposite. So I'm going to take, twist it and make it so that the, again, the opening in this little piece is towards the back. it around and now you can see it's off center so now it needs to be bent in this direction and you'll just keep tweaking it until you get it just in the right spot that's pretty close I think you get the idea let me move the book out of the way here okay and then the last thing I'll mention, when you actually put it on the ship, you need to make it so that the holes in the dead eye look like a little face. So the nose would be pointing down, lined up with this, and then the two eyeballs staring straight out at you. I've got a lot to make. Let me get started. I have these in place on one of them. And even though these nails are very tiny, the holes that are in these are still smaller than the nails. I've had to improvise a little bit. It's very difficult to drill through that brass because it's so thin. So what I've resorted to is, is kind of filing down the, the nail's diameter. I'm also pre-drilling 
those holes so it's not so rough on hammering them in. Here's another example where I use my little belt sander to uh, change the diameter of this tiny nail and just make it a little sharper. It's probably too small to see on camera, but it does file it down. The metal in the nails is very soft. Now I'll pre-drill this small hole here. The instructions say be careful not to drill into your power lines for your lights. So that's kind of a sobering thought. I don't drill all the way through. And now hopefully I can take this. Line it up. Release the clamping scissors. And now I'll just tap this in place. So you get the idea of what I'm working for. This one's going to cause a little bit of a problem because my cannon is in the way. In looking at this, maybe this should have been a little higher. Uh, but I rested it right on top of this rub strip here. And I'll go ahead and finish out this video at this point because you, you've got the idea of what I'm doing. I do have this little face plate on the front of it so it'll hold all those in place. I can maneuver these a little bit as I get ready to do the, uh, the lines that go to them. And again, I can twist that so I get the little face that I want. Most of them are lined up already correctly, you can see. In these videos, I try to show what complications you can run into and especially as a beginner so although i've i've been building a few ships i'm still learning that's it for this segment i hope you found it helpful especially if you're a beginning shipbuilder it's a rewarding hobby that i truly enjoy so as always thanks for watching stay tuned for episode 23 in the next few weeks i hope <laughs>